Welcome to the Look Good, Move Well podcast. Um, I, I started something maybe a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago. I just started taking quick shots, little on my phone, um, of my my meal prep for the day. So I've done all kinds of different meal prep schedules in my lifetime. And what I'm into these days is I have a lot of food prepped and ready to cook, but it's not like pre-cooked in the in the fridge. I just pull it out in the morning and uh, I try and gather all of my food and meals for the day. And then I just throw them in glass containers, snap a picture of it and post it to social media, post it to my story. And it's been sort of like this, hey, this is what I do every single day, you know. It's the every day, every damn day, <laughs> Marcus Philly story feed uh, reel, and I want to show it because um, this is like an area that many people find to be very hard, and I'm not trying to present it like, hey, this is easy, but it is something that I still do every day, and it plays a huge impact in um, what I think people perceive as something that's just. I'm genetically gifted. It comes naturally. Comes easy. It's like, oh, you're just lean, and you know, I I can't do that. And people have their uh, some followers, and some people that don't know me that well will just assume, hey, he's doing something, you know, uh, that lacks integrity to try and you know look the look the part. But the the what goes into it is you know a daily commitment to handling and making my own food to know what goes into my body. And uh, that is a really intimidating thing for people. They just uh, don't understand how, how, do I, how do I make this an everyday practice or a once a week practice or a one meal a week practice. Um, and the, the intimidating portion of it is this, this place called the kitchen, right? Where there's like, maybe there's there's good food or maybe there's lack of food maybe there's a bunch of appliances that you know how to use or you don't know how to use maybe you don't have very many appliances or anything really that you're conf- confident with um, so that w- that's what we want to talk about today is what are some you know beginner tools in the kitchen because that you know it's just like begin like you trying to start training you come into the gym and you do the super hard intense workout on your first day and it just overwhelms you and you're like I'm not coming back to that that's not my thing Um, we don't want to dive into you know Michelin starred restaurant cookbooks that have 20 steps just to get through you know the appetizer like if you look at that what the heck I don't know what to do so hopefully we can cover some of the things I've talked about we can talk about what recipes really should look like if you're a beginner and maybe some basic uh, tools in the kitchen and I would love to hear um hear your kind of interpretation of what this the, the struggle and the challenges for who we who we speak to that's right whenever you post food on your story and when we make posts on instagram that are nutrition related it always gets a very potent response and i yeah. think that people are really trying to figure out what exactly you're doing in the kitchen and i think one encouraging piece of news is that it's not as hard as it might seem Um, It does take some commitment and some daily practice, as you said, but I know for myself for meal prep, it really doesn't take that long. And I know for you, you're able to throw something together quickly. So I think one struggle is just overcoming the mental barrier of meal prep and I have to get into the kitchen and spend four hours and line up 20 containers and fill them all with some complicated meal. So I think breaking it down into really literally what you do that's fast and easy that gets the goal accomplished of making tasty food, simple food, easy food that will really fuel your body well would be a great thing to cover today. Great. Well, let's dive into it. And I will say that, you know, with with speed, uh, trying to get things done quickly, you know, with with food, you can like if you're trying to get your meals quick as quickly as possible, then the quickest way possible is to have somebody else do it for you and then just put it in front of you. Now, when somebody else does it for you, there there's a lot of variables that you can control and you can't control. And if you want to control more of the variables, you're likely going to have to pay more and more money. You're going to say, hey, I want it this way, this way, this way. Let's get those portions, those portions, those portions. 
you're starting to look at like custom meal delivery systems and, and, and that can raise cost. Yeah, there's lower cost options out there, but there's always some trade-off when you're putting it in the hands of somebody else. When you start to learn the tools for yourself, you can then start to control the variables that you want over time, meaning I want to have more calories, less calories. I like to have more protein. I want to make sure I'm eating organic. I want to make sure I'm not putting in refined uh, vegetable oils and carbohydrates into my into my dishes. Right? Because these things are getting put into a lot of prepared dishes that are out there that somebody else is making for you, which you're happy for, for them to be making it for you because you don't have time and you need to fuel yourself. But the trade-off ends up being inflammatory ingredients, foods that have more calories than you really need and you, you want, and body compositions and f inflammation, health markers that just aren't ideal if you're eating that way. Now, uh, if it's the difference between, hey, I got to pay a little more, I'm going to eat this thing that this person's making for me, it's better than me rolling through a fast food drive through then, of course, that's, that's a better option because I don't have, I haven't learned how to make the food myself. Um, but if we can learn a couple tools here, then you can start simple, one meal a week, two meals a week. And trust me, it, it started really sloppy for me. It started really bad for me. And it's been 20 years of cooking, well, almost 20 years of really starting to cook my own food, uh, about 17, 16 years when I was like in college and started to prepare my own meals because I knew that that was the ticket to get the body that I really wanted. Yeah. And I think one thing when it comes to meal preparation at home is to understand that there are some things that you can do just very, that become very routine. And I think that one thing that I like to think about for myself, because I'm not the kind of person that likes to prep for four hours at a time. I'm more of a throw it together right before I need it kind of person. And I, I try to think about it in terms of what can I do to sabotage myself in a helpful way, <laughs> like hmm. to put some things in the fridge that I just constantly have on hand and to make it make the barrier to entry to cooking something for myself super low so that yeah. it's very fast. Yeah. Um, I I love that you mentioned like you're not the type of person that likes to meal prep for four hours and take up a huge chunk and um, you know that's something that, that I have fluctuated in and out of in my lifetime too and I'm now not in a process of meal prepping a full entire week's worth of food on Sunday I used to do that and you know it just it it just started to eat up time that I wanted to be spending elsewhere on a Sunday and so I completely understand that you know, somebody might have that objection to meal prepping because they've heard it's Sunday, you go all in and, you know, you basically set yourself up for the week. They're like, but Sunday's my day to chill. I don't want to do that. So it's not, there's not just one way to, to go after this. And there's uh, different schedules. There's different, again, amounts of how much you're going to prepare your own food versus eat out or, you know, shop at the grocery store for quick, easy and, you know, to go meals. Um, and I'm in the process, like I said, of a daily sort of preparation method. Um, but I, I think what you just uh, talked about, like this, you know, positively sabotage yourself of stocking your household with the right stuff, that's that's the first place to begin. And people uh, that might be interested in taking a, you know, dipping their toe into meal prep um, or, you know, making their own meals... If you don't have the ingredients, then you can't get started. And if you just have a pantry full of dried pasta and canned pasta sauce, and that's your only option, then that's all you're going to be able to make. So if you want to add some protein and some vegetables to your diet, it starts at the grocery store. Or it starts at an online uh, shopping experience where you can pick out some things that you're going to start to cook with. So maybe we should start with, like, what are those things that you stock your your fridge with and I can add mine and then we can kind of go from there. Great. Yeah. I love getting down to the nitty gritty of what we actually do. So my go-to things to stock, I'm just going to start with protein. So I always have ground turkey. I always have ground bison and I always have ground beef usually in the freezer. 
-hmm. And the reason that I like ground meat is that I can defrost it super fast if I haven't planned ahead and I can cook it super fast. You don't have to do hardly anything to it. It's not fussy like a steak. You don't have to time it perfectly. You just throw it in the pan with some salt and pepper and one spice you like. I like occasion seasoning or that seasoning for all things that Imperfect Foods has. Yeah. And that's it. That's literally all you, all you can do for protein. So, yeah. And so for like somebody who's like, I don't want to just eat ground meat all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you say to somebody like that? Like, well, I want to have something more, something more interesting. Yeah. So I would think about something that could be prepared that's really easy to put together and that you can just keep a lot of around. One thing could be a, just a rotisserie chicken, like, you know, the good old rotisserie chicken. You don't always know what's in the skin and what the seasonings are. So that can be a little tricky if you're super detailed about macro counting. But I think that having a protein that you can always just grab and eat is better than not. So yeah. I would do that. Or if I had time, so, okay, my mom had this recipe called the hot chicken, mm. and you put a whole chicken on a pan, a baking sheet, and cover it with salt, throw it in the oven at 450 for 45 minutes to an hour, and that's it. And it's yeah. delicious. And yeah. that will last several days. Yeah, so uh, take home point here is you gotta have proteins on hand. That's one of the first things to think about shopping for. Think about shopping for some proteins that are really in your wheelhouse to prepare, or are really simple and fast to prepare for the same reason i love to have ground meat around we always have some form of ground beef bison turkey chicken pork any anything that we can you know we try and we try and rotate our proteins and get some variety in there because there's some good uh evidence and science behind rotating your you know protein sources vegetable sources food sources uh to in improve gut health and um, get adequate balance in your nutrient profile. But we always have that. And then I also like to have, you know, a couple different types and cuts of meat that might take a bit more thought in preparing. Um, but the way I end up preparing them is really, really simple. So ground meat in the pan is super easy to do. It can defrost quickly and you can cook two pounds of it in one pan and then portion it out into a number of meals that might last a day or two for one to two people. Um, I also always have some form of chicken, like portion chicken, so it's chicken thighs or chicken breasts that are in a bag marinating in something like a simple marinade. So I have a very simple marinade that I use repeatedly, which is tamari, balsamic, smoked paprika, and then salt and pepper. And that makes like uh i don't know it just adds some great flavor to chicken it goes really well with chicken thighs it also goes well with chicken breasts but um again the the, the idea is i want to have a variety of different proteins around that i can cook quickly and those can get cooked in a pan as well or i'll often just take those out into my grill and which is super low maintenance it's a smoker grill combo and i just turn it on put the meat on there literally kind of forget about it for about 20 minutes and then come back and it's ready. So I'm in the same boat. It's like, I don't want to have to think too much about it. Now, throughout the week, I might decide, hey, I want to have a steak. So cook a nice steak for dinner. Or I want to have some fish. And fish does not do great when it's like sitting in the fridge for a couple of days. So I just cook that. We eat that for dinner. Um, but as staples, uh, some protein source that's going to be the foundation of every meal. And one thing that I will do with something like ground meat is that I have found that if I cook ground meat and eat it, if I cook ground meat, put it in the fridge for a day or two, reheat it and eat it, it's pretty much the same palate wise to me. Like I don't see a big difference. Um, I know that if I'm going to store something in the fridge for a little bit, I might slightly undercook it because I know it's going to reheat later and finish cooking. But that's something that I like to still prepare ahead of time because it is, it's the part of cooking that might take a little bit longer. It might be a little bit of a hassle. Like the protein is the, the food source that I want to have immediately accessible when my body says, hey, I'm hungry. Yep. And I talked about this recently either in an article that we wrote or, um, you know, just on story. But it's like if you're waiting, if you get, if you get hungry – 
and you got nothing available, the quickest things to gr to grab are going to be starches or refined carbohydrates or things that are really processed. That's going to get you nutrients quickly. And you want to have something like, uh, you know, those are not going to be easy to portion control, to um, keep yourself from overeating. Whereas if you have lean protein or a home cooked prepared protein on hand, you're going to be a lot, lot more able to eat something good, satiate yourself, and then be ready for like, you know, good appetite control. Yeah. And let's also think about no, I'm just, what I'm just sweating a lot over here. <laughs> I noticed. Like, and I need a towel. <laughs> towel quickly. <Towel. laughs> <laughs> There's um, some in the downstairs bathroom closet. You know, that was, uh, that's, uh, that's what coffee and a little bit of uh, working out right before we podcast will do. Yeah. So if you guys are not watching this <laughs> on YouTube right now and you're listening, you're listening to us, <laughs> you're missing out on beads of sweat rolling down my face. <laughs> I could tell that our crew that is here is looking at me funny. They're like, man, can we get this guy something, you know, a towel? And as soon as I could sense that they were feeling that, I started sweating even more. Like... It started to really ramp up. So if you're a YouTube viewer right now, <laughs> drink it in. Just this enjoy. Is, this is me in my full sweat glory. Thank you. Yep. Give me the beach towel for crying oh, out loud. I mean, he needs this, the big one. <laughs> man. Oh. The things I do to get this content out. Oh, yeah. Don't edit this out, Nate. Whatever you do, this has got to stay in. Everybody's listening. Hello, look good, move well audience. <laughs> this is your cue to go find this on video if you're listening yeah, to the audio God, version. <laughs> you've only been hitting us on the, audi the, uh, the audible version of this. You need to go to YouTube ASAP. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to leave this right here. Yeah, keep that handy. Not, it's keep not it going to stop. It's not going <laughs> to stop. Um, okay, I was going to say something about tacos. Let's do it. All right. So when I get in that mode where I haven't really prepared and it's, I'm kind of getting hungry and I'm like, Ooh, I kind of need to eat something soon. I always just want a taco to appear at my door, mm -hmm. like get an Uber eats, get a taco delivery, just do nothing and have tacos magically show up. But I wanted to bring up a point about protein amounts. So I know, you know, as much as I love tacos that they're not going to have enough protein for actually yeah. my requirements. So that's when I'm I'm almost like helpfully sabotaging myself by being in the mode of like knowing what it feels like to eat enough protein because when mm -hmm. you get hooked on that feeling of actually being satiated and fueled yeah. well, then you're kind of like, oh, I could get the tacos or I could just make some turkey really fast and it'll be really filling and good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was, uh, you know, while I was handling the... Um perspiration over here and not <laughs> able to fully complete my thought on protein consumption um i just i think you just nailed it it's like if you have been in a process for any length of time of knowing that protein is this kind of staple uh, macronutrient for your meals the reason it becomes such a staple in your routine is because of the feeling that you get when you fill yourself with some protein first is that it will help you manage your appetite. It'll help you manage your energy. You'll know when you feel full. And ultimately, if you're chewing it well and it's good source meat uh, or protein, you're going to actually, you know, your energy level is going to be good. Your digestion is going to be good. And it's going to clear out of your stomach relatively quickly. It won't be heavy like people assume. And again, if you start there, then you have a much better chance of, you know, eating a balanced amount for what your needs are rather than like, you know, I'm going to start with the, the, the bowl of rice over here. You know, oh, I'm just having a little bit more more rice, more rice, more rice. And then, you know, after it's too late, you have a few bites of protein. Your body hasn't been able to send the right signals to your brain saying, hey, I'm full, I'm satiated. Those carbohydrates are just easy to consume quickly and take in too much, you know, energy for what your body needs at a given time. Um, so, okay, we've nailed the protein thing. So we've got those in the fridge. We've got those either thawed out or easily ready to thaw out. We're, two, we're talking about two cooking methods. We're talking about put it in a pan, heat it up, right? Get a. What kind of pan do you use for this? Just a nice steel pan. It's yeah. just a really, you know, a Cuisinart. Yeah. So you can get a nice, uh, uh, like, stainless steel pan. You can get a, like, a non-stick pan that's mm -hmm. 
you know, gonna you're ha- gonna have to change that out periodically. Because I have a cast do, iron one too. That's good. Yeah, a cast iron pan. I mean, I like cast iron for ground meats because it just holds a lot of heat, and they're relatively inexpensive, and it's gonna cook everything really evenly. So, um, so we're talking pan cooking or a grill, mm-hmm. and a grill is great. Um, not for ground meats unless you want to make burger patties, but that's also an easy thing to do. You can portion those out. Like I'll get a pound of meat and then I'll make four burger patties. So I've got four quarter pounders, throw them on the, on the grill. And then they just sit in a glass jar or a glass container in the fridge. And I know how to pull out four ounces of meat at any time that I want it. Yep. Um, okay. So then moving on, what's next for you? Then I would think about my starch. Okay. So one of my go-tos is that I have an ancient rice cooker and I will just throw a quarter cup of rice in there, which is about right for my needs. And it cooks super fast. I can make it like an afterthought or quinoa works in the rice cooker too. Awesome. So that's another super simple. So you, you go to thinking about starches next. And now we've talked a lot about carbohydrates, carbohydrate needs, people's starch needs. This is very individual. You know, you, uh, how many carbs you need is relative to, how well your body processes them, how much activity you have in a day. Um, and for some people, that's just a that's a macronutrient and a food group that's hard to control portions with because they tend to go for really refined carbs that, you know, have a lot of salt on them. They're very sweet. Maybe they have added fat to them. So that's not my next go-to. But when you're talking about starch, having a way to cook it really simply so that you're not adding a bunch to it, a rice cooker is awesome. We have a rice cooker at our house that we'll probably turn on once a week. The kids love it. And it's just for us, it's simple. It's white rice, water, a little pinch of salt. We don't do anything fancy. We don't go with like different types of rice. We use white rice because it cooks consistently. It tastes really good. And it's almost equivalent to like any of the brown rices or other types of rices out there in terms of nutrient quality. We're just getting some, some carbs from it. So for me, I go next to vegetables. So I always have lots of vegetables in the fridge ready to go. And this is a part that might be very intimidating for people who haven't done a lot of prep because it's like, what do I do with this vegetable? It's, you know, I got to cut it. I got to, how do I chop it? And, you know, you got to deal with a knife and that can be a little intimidating. So we, I always have a combination of like, we get vegetables that I actually have to chop and have to maybe peel and do the, and then I also get bags of pre-cut or easy to just throw into a cooker vegetables those would be from you know i go to costco and i get organic green beans that are already pre-trimmed and you just pull them out of the bag and it's like throw them in a steamer or throw them in the air fryer both options are very quick and low maintenance you literally have to do nothing other things are like at costco they have a big bag of chopped prepared organic broccoli that works really well for for me to go to really fast. On the other side, I might get a head of cauliflower where I have to chop it and portion it out, but you could even find that in a bag and you could find that already pre-cut too. So I have vegetables, so it's like I got my protein, then I take a bunch of vegetables out and I throw them. Currently, my my favorite is the air fryer. Now an air fryer, people are like, oh, isn't it bad to be eating fried food all the time? And that's not what we're talking about here. An air fryer is essentially an oven. It's just a small countertop oven that can heat up really fast. So an oven might take 10 minutes to preheat to 400. You know, an air fryer is at 400 degrees within 30 seconds. And it circulates air in there, which basically makes this like you know, you put a little bit of like olive oil or some oil that you want to cook in and it just sort of moves the fat around in there. So it gets crispy, but it's not deep fried food. It's not adding a ton of, you know, calories or fat to your meals. And essentially it's just really crispy roasted vegetables that you would do in your oven. But the oven is intimidating because you got to get a pan, you got to clean the pan, you got to, you got to preheat it, you got to put it on, you got to make sure the oil's on there. I love the air fryer because it's just vegetables in, Drizzle oil, shake it up, salt on top, put it in, set it, and just walk away, and I can fix all the other stuff. And then when it's done, I pour it on top of the meat, and that could potentially be a full meal right there for somebody. Yeah. So if I have time, I will prep a sheet of veggies in the oven with the oil and the salt and pepper and roast them. But 
that is more and more infrequent these days. Yep. And my go-to is the microwave. Yeah. And I will just chop up a, you know, I get the Imperfect Foods weekly produce delivery. So I always have some fresh vegetables in the house. I'll just chop up a uh, squash, a zucchini, some green beans, whatever. And my microwave has a setting for vegetable. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Cook vegetable. I don't know. Vegetable. It works fine. Yeah. <laughs> But it's so, I'm not doing anything yeah. complicated. And the other thing that I do, this is my helpful self-sabotage, is that I just keep a lot of, I like fresh vegetables in the yeah. summertime. So I'll just, th this morning, this is what I did. I just threw in a handful of cherry tomatoes, you know, the baby carrots in the bag, yep. uh, maybe a chopped cucumber. I had some snap peas. There's your veggies. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the same thing in the summertime. I'm a big fan of cooked veggies. I just digest them better i have always been a fan of that roasted flavor but i am doing like one salad or one raw a day one raw veggie a day and so um i get those little boxes of like pre-washed salad mix or arugula or whatever greens i have little baby carrots little tomatoes cherry tomatoes i have like these persian cucumbers which the kids love they're the small ones that are really easy to chop up I might chop one of those up, throw it all into a bowl, and then it's like olive oil and balsamic, and take out some of that chicken that had already been cooked, slice it up, and I have this like salad that's great, and it's full of good nutrients. It's got my protein, it's got veggies, and that fills me up. So having a little bit of salad stuff on hand, you know, it's like two containers of the salad mix and those three different things to mix something, that can be a, a really quick go-to as well. Um, and, and I will add starches to my meals. It's just something that it's not like, I'm not doing a lot of rice these days. I'm doing more potatoes. And the reason I'm doing the potatoes is because I can chop the potatoes and I can throw them in with the air fryer. So it's all say, mixed in there. And air fryer potatoes. Yeah. Air fryer potatoes are really good. So I've been, yeah, plugging for the air fryer right now. And don't ask me what brand I have because the brand wore off. I used it so much. I don't you even know. No it idea. Anymore. But they're all about the same. Um, and I, the co the questions I've been getting on social media are, how do you clean your air fryer? And I'm like, well, it's actually pretty simple. I just dump all the veggies out. You know, the there's like a little insert where it sits on that. I pull that out. It goes in the dishwasher. And then the rest, I just water and scrub it. And someone said, oh, the coils underneath get messy and greasy and whatever. And I was like... How greedy, you know, how dirty. Like, if I have this thing for a year, it costs me 40 bucks to buy. Like, you know, maybe you buy a new one, you know, when it gets too dirty. But I think they're different models. Some are easier yeah, to clean. Yeah, mine's been decent and it's been huge time saver. And I have increased the number of vegetables that I'm eating on a given day considerably, which that's a, that's a great hack for people who are trying to change their energy balance and their caloric intake. It's like the volume of food... You know, it's like I cook almost two pounds of, uh, you know, over two pounds of vegetables and it equates to about, you know, 400 calories in total, right? So it leaves room to, for me to have, you know, other other things to go with that. Yeah. And especially in the morning too, I like to eat more fresh fruit. Mm. So that's another carb source. I'm a fruity gal. Yeah. And um, in the summertime, it's just pure deliciousness. You said, I'm a fruity gal. And I said, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you You're are. like, yeah, you totally, are. Totally, <laughs> totally. Now, we have a big bowl of fresh fruit, too, especially in the summertime. There are usually four to five different types of fruits in there. The kids like them, and it's just something I can just add to the meal quickly. Eat so, your colors. Yeah, protein. You can hit starches really simple. It's uh, a little rice cooker. You can cook just, you know, if you have... Uh, a, a good rice cooker and you're cooking smaller quantities you have like a a jar a big jar of white rice you know dry rice there, that's exactly whatever what rice you take a scoop put it in add a little water press the button and it'll be done in 15 minutes while you're getting the other things together so i i do think that this is like i come into the kitchen in the morning start brewing my coffee gather up these things press button on the air fryer add a little bit of meat everything's done in 15, 20 minutes for the whole day. Exactly. Just about, you know, I mean, I might have to like come home in the evening and whip up this little salad when I'm socializing with my family and we're just there, but I don't consider that added, you know, prep time. It's 20 minutes to prep. 
how many minutes and how much time in a day are you spending? What should I eat? Where am I going to go get that food? Drive to the place, order the food, wait for the food, eat the food, you know, and then feel sluggish because it wasn't the right food for you. And you just all this time and energy goes into figuring out how you're going to fuel yourself each day. And this is our tool. These are our, these are our tools for taking more control over that so that we get the right stuff, have more hours of the day that we feel energetic. We start to look and feel the way we want to feel. So we're confident in ourselves. And this is like, this is how you build motivation, have the discipline to start doing something. And then that motivation will kind of pick up its, its own inertia. Cause you start to feel like, Whoa, that those 20 minutes gave me back two hours of my day and gave me back something that I never even knew I was missing. Yeah, and these are great building blocks if you're learning how to cook because all these things are so accessible and easy once you get in there and start to figure it out. You'll get in the flow of it very quickly. And then if you have more time and you want to experiment, you can make a little sauce. You can take on a new cut of meat that you haven't tried to prep before. And you can always expand from there, but it's great to have just your foundational building blocks that can always be your fast go-tos when you have no time and you're just throwing things together. Yeah, so I'm glad you kind of hit that point because... Uh, I want to go back to talking about how it started for me. You know, my first dive into, so I was um, a sophomore in college and I had just transitioned from the dorm life to an apartment. The dorm life was just eating whatever was there, you know, in the dining hall, which wasn't, wasn't all terrible, but it wasn't always good. Then moved into the apartment and I was like, oh, I got to shop for my own food. I got to figure out. So I think for the first like semester, I was like eating out for lunch and breakfast was like prepackaged like pastries from like Costco and and like a Adwala smoothie, which was basically just a big glass of sugar. And when we'd eat dinner at home, it was like hoagie sandwiches with like, you know, bread and like sausages and cheese. And like I didn't know what a vegetable was. And um, I got to a point where I was like just really unhappy with how I felt. I didn't make this big connection like my diet's off and my cousin was into some bodybuilding. He's like, oh, you try this diet, you know, try this diet thing. And I was like, okay, cool. And it was like these very specific meals. I had to make like a omelet with like egg whites and tomatoes and like he had it down to the, and then there was like a, an oatmeal recipe that had me putting, I want to say like, like a craft cheese single on it melting that in there you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. american cheese baby um and then there was a there was a cottage cheese thing where i ate with fruit loops okay and then there were these two salads that i'd have at night one with chicken and one with tuna and uh that was my that was like this diet that i was i was like a meal plan crazy and um minus the parts in the middle that were uh had some processed like easy to grab things like i had to actually cook some things over here I cooked the same salad for like four months, you know, made the same salad. I made the same omelet for like four months and it was simple and it was kind of dreadful. It was like super watery because it was just like tomato water juice all over this omelet. The the salads were like, I was trying to clean the the lettuce and it was like wet and just like, it was Mm -hmm. just a soggy salad with like, you know, the canned tuna. Mm -hmm. Like there's like the chunk tuna and then there's like that kind of cat food looking tuna. It Mm -hmm. was more of that. I was just like kind of, it was sloppy. And, but I was like, I want to, you know, I'm committed to this. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I I learned some things from that, that I was like, I don't really want to do this forever. But then I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta figure out how to make this better. Like, this isn't good. This is, this doesn't taste that great or it's not, I'm sure there's a better way to do it. And, you know, fast forward to now, like you said, it's like add one thing, like try and master something. So my omelets got way better. My salads got way better. Someone taught me how to make a simple dressing. Oh my gosh. Like when you actually use a little bit of Dijon mustard and a little bit of olive oil and some better vinegar, like that can taste really good. And then, yeah, then I graduated on to cooking some more of my food because I saw the results of this. And I was like, I, I want to try and add to my repertoire. Started to watch some Food Network, learn how to cook chicken from Bobby Flay. Oh, that's how you mix in some spices. Did that for like a few months, really got good at that. And then, okay, let's in, let's learn something about a basic sauce or let's learn another preparation for vegetables. Introduce me to roasting. Oh, wow. This is how you roast something. Uh, so it, it's, you don't need to tackle a lot at the beginning. You need to pick one thing 
And you don't need to go the route that I went, which was like suffering through soggy salads and suffering through soggy omelets. Like you can learn some very fundamentals with, and what we talked about today is the, the, the way towards fundamental tasty food, a ground meat that you like, a vegetable that you can steam or throw in an air fryer really quickly, a little bit of white rice, and eating these real foods that have been simply prepared with basic heat applications, that is how you build meals, not through complex recipes. And when the question comes to me regularly, hey, Marcus, would you ever put out a recipe book? I'm like, I kinda, I'm kind of like, my new hashtag is like, hashtag no recipes. It's just like, it's just, just food, right? Yeah, I, w- I will show you how to combine things in a way that is palatable to me and can build out a balanced macronutrient profile, but it's not like, okay, first step this, that second step this. Like, I have a recipe for bread making, but not for building a plate of food. Right. And that's the building a plate of food. We gave you the recipe for that today. And that is that is the recipe for good nourishment and your life of eating and fueling yourself is protein, starch, vegetable, fruit on hand. You know, we, we mentioned some, some healthy fats in there like olive oil or avocado or butter. These are just add-ons that go on top of the things that we already mentioned. They're the cooking, you know, oil that you use when you're making your vegetables or when you want to, you know, add a little flavor to your rice, you put a little butter on it. Like that, that's simple. You yep. don't need to do anything beyond that. And this was really where this concept of five ingredient meals came from when we have addressed that in the past in the podcast. It's like, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not a long recipe. It's there's one ingredient, here's two, there's three, here's four, put them together, add a little bit of oil. That's number five, and you're you're on your way to eating so well, taking control over your nourishment, and avoiding many of the pitfalls that are going to be out there when you are in a pinch, you haven't prepared, and you got to go get some food from somebody else that's making it, and there's that trade-off. Yeah, and we're not talking supplements. We're not talking protein powders. Mm-mm. This fundamental practice is where so many results can be created. Yeah, and and people say, oh man, you couldn't possibly be, you know, uh, natural. Like you must be supplementing with all these things. And I'm like, no, I've been cooking my own food for a decade. I've been training for you know a decade and a half. And if you if you're dedicated to it, it can happen. And something we didn't talk about is measuring macronutrients and you know all of the other nuanced like calorie counting that might come with somebody trying to change their body. I don't believe that's the first step. I think that if you can master these fundamentals, many of you listeners and viewers would be able to see the results that they want, that you want out of your body with never having to track anything. You just start to eat real food and you'll see a tr- dramatic difference. Now, once you've mastered these things or you've made them a staple in your life, yeah, you can take it to the next step. Okay, I'm going to measure out what I'm eating each day so I know how much. And that's my process, but it doesn't have to be your process. And it's not my step one. It was my step three, four, or five. You know, I had to get these other foundations set first. Yeah, and when you get to the point of measuring being in practice of creating your own meals yourself will make it so much easier. Exactly. Someone says, I don't even know how to measure. It's like, well, because you don't even cook your own food yet. Like you don't know how to assemble the ingredients that you're counting on the sheet. And yeah, I don't know how to, I don't know how to track Panda Express number four. I don't know. (laughs) That's difficult. Yep. Yeah. Because it's not the same. You know, what what one person scoops into your plate versus another person, it's not going to you get it's very in, imprecise but uh if you um and and you know nothing against panda express i mean have you had the the general general chow chicken there no no, no. it's been about a decade and a half it's for been me, probably like 20 years i can still taste it i can <laughs> still taste it it's mm, that's good so takeaways get into the kitchen try a couple things yeah go get yourself a protein a vegetable and a starch that you want to try and cook, make your meal, and and then do it again, and yeah. then do it again. Let us know how it goes. What questions come up? 
Yeah. Let us know. Let us know. All right. We'll see you all next time. See ya. See ya.